Welcome to a show where you will hear about how our liberty is being eroded by the very people that swear an oath to protect it. Today, the president signed a big new anti-terrorism bill that would expand the government's ability to track down terrorists, but at some cost. On this show, we will discuss many of the lies that the government, the government that hates us, by the way, we will discuss the lies that the people in positions of power and influence spread every day. And what is the best way to confuse children? Confuse them about their sexuality, confuse them about their gender, expose them to things that their little brains are not ready for yet. That is how they are confusing children. It is leading to chaos. And big daddy government, of course, can be there to pick, up, pick us all up and take care of us at the end of it. We will also talk about how current elected leadership at all levels of government has been corrupted by power and control, as well as discuss the types of leadership needed to correct our republic's course. We the people. Well, it's time to remember that we the people are the government. Providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians, that's the number one priority for the United States right now. I am your host, Larry Linton, retired U.S. Navy Command Master Chief and prior Tennessee House of Representatives District 12 candidate, and welcome to the Liberty Leadership and Lies podcast. Welcome to this week's show, ladies and gentlemen. Before I introduce the topic this week, I want to thank you all for the feedback you've provided me on my first ever video version of the podcast. Let me tell you, that was a huge step outside of my comfort zone. I do not know why I find it more comfortable addressing actual people in a room or out in the open, like I'm currently doing out here in New Mexico. And sometimes the size of these groups is anywhere from five to 25 people. And I even address groups as large as 500 people while I was on active duty. But I can do that much more comfortably than I can looking into a camera and speaking. I did not think it would be as intimidating or as hard as it was. But this is a work in progress, and I will strive to improve the quality of this and all future episodes. That includes the sound levels between the videos and the segment breaks. Honestly, that was something that did not come through the computer video editing as I was working on combining the segments with the breaks together. And I only discovered it by listening to the show on a podcast platform myself. But on to the topic. In this week's episode, we're going to discuss or debunk a few of the many lies the modern-day communists spread every day. And just where do you find these communists? Well, you can find them quite easily. They are most commonly found as members of the modern Democrat Party. And there are even a few in the Republican Party. And that is at the local, state, and federal levels. The communists... They also occupy nearly every position in the sycophant legacy news media, as well as owning or leading almost every single one of the big tech companies in the world. In fact, I'm awfully surprised that this show has not been censored on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram yet. Anyway, we're going to show how these communists, they straight up lie to our faces every day. The lies these evil people spread through either pushing them from the White House briefing room with the affirmative action hire that is the currently serving press secretary, or the communists are also pushing these lies through social media. Mostly, they do it through the people that serve as the regime's useful idiots that are incapable of or unwilling to exercise critical thinking. They also do it in the legacy news media with the bootlickers they just want a seat at the table of their leaders when the destruction of the Republic is complete, each of them vying for the position as the head of the Ministry of Truth. Combine those with the big tech companies and three-letter government agencies silencing or censoring any person that is capable of critical thinking that calls them out on those very same lies. I was glad to see that the Biden regime received another smackdown last week with a circuit court's decision to include the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, a subdivision of the Department of Homeland Security, in its order to quit collaborating with social media companies in the silencing of people that question election integrity. Remember, CISA was the agency that they, they declared the 2020 presidential election the most free, secure, and fair election in history. Liars, all of them. Anyway, what every citizen in this republic must realize, though, is this. 
All these lies being spun or propagated by the groups I just mentioned, they have one ultimate goal in mind. That goal is to get every citizen in our once free republic to walk willingly or blindly down the path towards tyranny. Now, the commies and their willing allies, they're useful idiots, and they, they know that a large number of freedom-loving Americans will not walk willingly down that path, so they spread these lies in order to blind people. The people that most readily accept these lies or, or are blinded by them, outside of their mindless followers, those are the people that just want to be left alone. We've talked about them before on this program. We, the people, need to start taking these communists at their word, though. Like when they make statements about fundamentally transforming the republic, as Barack Obama famously claimed. Fundamental transformation that is accomplished through government's usurpations of our liberty and the shredding of our constitution. Or the ruling elite in our nation's capital, or even our state's capitals, forcing the citizens to live by the executive orders or edicts or quote-unquote cooperation agreements with other countries or large non-governmental organizations. We also need to take the alphabet mafia at their word when they say they are coming for our kids. This trip down the path of tyranny is also accomplished through that indoctrination of generations of children in the core tenets of critical race theory and critical gender theory that's being brought into government education centers and systems through the Trojan horse of social emotional learning curriculums purchased with the taxpayer's dollars. Oh, and we cannot forget that the communists must throw in a whole bunch of climate alarmism to spread fear. Fear is the best way to obtain control. But just like the old saying of all roads lead to Rome, in this case, all lies lead to tyranny. The communists and their allies are working feverishly to quash and dismantle every single one of our constitutionally protected, self-evident, unalienable, God-given rights. And they are doing it right before our eyes, with only a few stalwart defenders of liberty standing in the way. These communists know that the Constitution and those that believe in it are impediments to their tyranny. Imagine the successes we could have if everybody, including the people that just want to be left alone, suddenly just refused to cooperate in their lives and started fighting for their constitutionally protected liberties. That would be glorious. Now, the scale and pace of which these lies have been leading us on this path, they've dramatically increased for the past two decades. The spread of these lies only experienced a minor hiccup or interruption recently because of the arrival of a newcomer on the political scene in the form of the great disruptor, Donald Trump. But that pace resumed in 2021 through the cabal's successful theft of that 2020 election. I think that label fits Donald Trump perfectly, don't you? Much like Ronald Reagan is referred to as the great communicator, Donald Trump, with his America First platform, is the great disruptor of this generation. Let's all join in the disruption, though, shall we? Now, one of the many lies that can be easily debunked is one that the pro-abortion movement latched onto decades ago, and that is the lie or mantra of my body, my choice. That is and always has been a lie to cover up the tyranny of the communists and their baby-killing zealotry. If the communists have a religion, it is definitely one that includes the sacrifice on babies on the altar of big government. Another one of the lies told the American people is how our tax dollars, well, how even more of our tax dollars are needed so that the wealthiest nation on earth can control the temperature of the planet. We'll expose that as a lie. We'll also expose the lie that federalism is alive and well in our constitutional republic. These points, along with the closing with God's word this week, are just more bits of information or pieces of the puzzle then when put together, start to reveal that the entire picture shows to the audience that our government not only is one that truly hates us, but it is a government that sees the citizens, as these taxpayers, of this nation as the sources of money they spend willy-nilly to keep them in their positions of power and influence. With that, let's get the show started.
And we're back. Thanks for sticking with the content so far, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, so the first line we're going to debunk is the communist chant of my body, my choice. There are several ways to debunk that lie. One of which being, well, it just isn't the pregnant woman's body involved. Now, is it? Yes, I said woman, because I, along with just about every sane person on the planet, can actually define what a woman is. A woman is an adult human female born with the capacity or the genitalia that allow her to become pregnant, meaning ovaries, uterus, and, and the capacity to become pregnant. Key words not mentioned there are, well, I won't use them, but suffice to say they are male genitalia. Any person born with, yes, born with male genitalia is not, nor can they ever be, a woman. Now, there are people born with male genitalia that are claiming to be, quote unquote, woman. That's only done for a couple of reasons. The biggest reason, and it's probably true in nearly 100% of those cases, is that they are suffering from a mental illness that is called gender dysphoria. And in order to get us to follow along with this lie, the commies want to force us all into playing along in that delusion. Same thing goes with the pronouns. But anyway, I say nearly 100% of the cases because there are some outliers of that. Some other reasons are there are men claiming to be women in order to compete and win against biological women in sports because they cannot compete against their male competitors. That is becoming more and more prevalent today. The next reason is a social contagion among children that is being facilitated and encouraged by those parents that are suffering from transhousing syndrome by proxy. That last reason is a truly evil one. It is child abuse of the highest order. In our society, we don't let children under the age of 18 buy weapons, purchase alcohol or cigarettes. We don't allow them to vote. We do that because sane adults understand that children are incapable of making those decisions. Just like most parents won't let their children run with scissors down the middle of a busy freeway because of the danger one or both of those activities entail, parents should not be allowing their children, infected by the social contagion that is transgenderism, make life-altering decisions about their body while they are still children. Anyway, that was a bit off topic, but you get the point. Transgenderism is just another lie meant to confuse people, create fear, and in the end, control a tiny group of people to become foot soldiers in our government's attempts to keep us all fighting amongst ourselves. By the way, that whole what is a woman is just a different lie that has caught root in our culture today as well. What they have really done, or what they're doing, is to try to change what the definition is that's already been around for millennia. As I have said, if you control the language, if you can control definitions, you control the outcome. We'll save that for another day. Now, getting back to my body, my choice. Again, that is a lie that the commies use to try and convey some right to body autonomy because they are only referring to one of the two bodies evolved in the equation. The one that wants to declare body autonomy while destroying or murdering the other body, taking away the body autonomy of the child. The child that has its own separate DNA that is inside the woman's womb. That argument is supposed to be based on body autonomy, and it's a fallacy on so many levels. First of all, this is a lie that is told to devalue the human life inside the woman's body. It's a lie they not only tell to others, but most importantly, they tell to themselves to make the decision to murder another human being easier on their conscience. It's the clump of cells fallacy, right? Well, just what is that clump of cells? When they say that, do they mean this clump of cells can grow and to develop into something other than a human being? Of course it can't. A clump of cells is just the development stage of the human body. But the clump of cells fallacy makes murdering the baby easy, right? By trying to convince themselves and others that it isn't human. I mean, the commies have been doing that for the entire history of their movement, just as they tried to justify slavery by saying the slaves weren't really or fully human. So whenever some crazed woman tells you that 
the baby growing inside her is just a clump of cells, realize that is the argument they are making only to ease their own conscience when they decide to murder the child. Secondly, what about the body autonomy part of their argument? It's my body and I can do whatever I want to it, right? Of course, that only applies to the sole particular circumstance of pregnancy. Nowhere else in the commie culture does the body autonomy argument take root. We witnessed that during the pandemic, didn't we? The same commies that said my body, my choice, were perfectly fine with punishing people that wanted to exercise their own body autonomy by refusing to inject themselves with an experimental vaccine. By the way, that is proving to be more and more every day to be one of the smartest decisions people made. Died suddenly is a term that has become a regular part of the lexicon since the quote-unquote vaccines rolled out. We cannot let these people normalize myocarditis like they normalized autism, if you know what I mean. But is what is striking about that good decision is the amount of people that made a bad decision. According to Statista.com, 69.4% of the U.S. population is considered to be fully vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. Well, that's just more proof that our population has been dumbed down by years of government indoctrination. But, but anyway, the quote-unquote fully vaccinated population in the United States, they were quite comfortable with the draconian measures to get the entire country injected with the newly redefined term vaccine. They cheered government measures to take away the body autonomy of the entire population, or to even force it upon children who couldn't make that decision for themselves. The commies love taking away all body autonomy, not only when it comes to things like vaccines, slavery, but taking it away from the human beings that can't speak for themselves, the baby in the womb. But get this, having failed to force everybody in the country to inject themselves with the vaccine, the commies weren't satisfied. They aren't, because roughly 30% of the population did not succumb to the tyranny of their lie that is my body, my choice. Recent news has revealed a new way to circumvent the body autonomy and force everybody to get the vaccine. See, they don't care about body autonomy. An article in the National Pulse that came out last month describes another method to erase body autonomy for the remainder of the population. In the article, it is reported that Yale University researchers have created a new airborne method of delivery for mRNA vaccines. They believe this method will radicalize the way people are vaccinated in the near future, which means it will definitely not be their choice. The 30% of us that refuse to believe the lies about this vaccine will now be forced to forced to get it just by breathing. Their findings are detailed in a report published in the journal Science Translational Medicine. Quote, in the new report, there is no intramuscular injection, said Professor Mark Saltzman, which is delightful for the commies because now they can just surreptitiously introduce this vaccine into the population without people being any the wiser. This news is coming now that COVID is back in the headlines with the standard government, legacy media, big tech, and useful idiot fear mongering. Also, there are documents that reveal the Department of Defense has spent millions of dollars on new COVID-related contracts. Some began last month, and there's some more beginning this month. Reported in the articles that this issue raises questions about aerosol vaccines being deployed without people's consent or awareness. Body autonomy, again, means nothing to the communists and biotechnologists, many of whom, in fact, most of them, probably receive a government grant. My body, my choice is a lie. These evil people have argued for years in respectable academic publications that, now get this, quote, compulsory, moral, bio-enhancement should be covert, unquote. It's, it's amazing. My body, my choice chants have always been a lie. A lie told to ease conscious or to make excuses for poor decisions. And as a straw man argument, based upon the commie's real dedication to their actual mantra of my body, 
It's the government's choice. Welcome back, folks. Again, I appreciate you sticking with me. Before I get into the climate alarmism line, I would like to solicit your feedback once again about the content and quality of the podcast. Are the improvements noticeable? Do you have any other suggestions for how I can improve the show? Are there any specific stories under the topics of liberty, leadership, and lies that you'd like to hear discussed? Do you know of any conservative personalities that you would like me to reach out to to ask to come on the show as a guest? If so, just send me an email. The email address is Larry at Liberty Leadership and Lies.com. Again, that is Larry at Liberty Leadership and Lies.com. Now let's talk about the line that is climate alarmism. It is the modern day equivalent of Chicken Little running around screaming, The sky is falling, the sky is falling. What used to be a funny cartoon is now a lie that government and their willing allies in big tech, not to mention global hedge fund managers, they are telling people all to increase the tax burden and cost of living on the citizens of the wealthiest nation on the planet. It is a lie told in order to not only destroy American exceptionalism, but told so the communists can destroy the republic as a sovereign nation. It destroys American exceptionalism by radically redistributing our nation's wealth to only a few woke companies, politicians, and hedge fund managers. It also destroys our sovereignty into redistributing our wealth to prop up agencies like the United Nations and many other third world countries and submitting the will of the people of these United States of America to that awful globalist organization, along with the new world order globalists at the World Economic Forum. You know those people, right? Headed by Klaus Schwab, that is the, that is the group of people that are telling the world that we will own nothing and be happy. Then we'll have to eat bugs and live in 15-minute cities. When you hear the term 15-minute cities, I always think concentration camps from here on out. Now, this propping up a third world country, it isn't done out of some sense of benevolence either. These evil communists just want to be able to exploit those very same countries and their natural resources for their own benefit and to increase their own personal wealth. Climate change is all about the redistribution of wealth and the gaining of power, control, and influence. Nothing more. Since the United States of America is the wealthiest nation on the planet, that means fleecing the taxpayers out of even more of their money to support these wacky programs with tax increases. It also means that with the government support of Green New Deal programs, it is picking the winners and losers in the free market. The winners are those green energy products. While the government attacks are gas stoves, light bulbs, ceiling fans, they are also providing subsidies, which is our tax dollars, for solar and wind energy companies and their products. Now, these subsidies make these products appear less expensive because their sticker price, it's already been lowered with our tax dollars. The inverse is true as well. It causes an increase in the price of the products that aren't green friendly. All of that increases the cost of living for everyday Americans. That benefits the communists and nobody else. I was recently reading an article at Forbes magazine online from November 2021 that was titled Five Big Lies About Climate Change and How Researchers Trained a Machine to Spot Them. This article discussed how the elites are combating the people they label as client science deniers. The article asked the question at the outset, so why does climate misinformation continue to spread online and in our media? Can you hear the tactic in that question? It has become a buzzword used so frequently, lady, misinformation. They think that by applying that label, it further solidifies their position that the quote-unquote science is settled. Well, we'll discuss how the science is not only not settled, but that it is skewed to promote their position. In other words, the climate alarmist commies, they're spreading misinformation themselves. The article then went into the discussion about a study that was published by the journal Nature Scientific Reports. I just wonder how many government grants the researchers in that journal have received over the years. Anyway, in this study cited in the article, researchers identified a wide array of dubious climate claims in their words, then programmed a computer to recognize 
The analysis exposed the changing face of climate change denial. In other words, a quote from the article is this quote, one of the most valuable insights from our research was identifying the most prevalent categories of climate misinformation, attacks on the integrity of climate science, and misinformation targeting climate solutions. Unquote. In other words, they programmed a computer to find any counter argument to their claim of man made climate change so that they could preemptively label it as misinformation. But you know what? How about some real evidence about the true nature of the commie climate change alarmist agenda? Many of you may have already heard about this, but in case you haven't, you need to share this information with everyone you know, especially the people that think that humans are changing the climate on the planet. Oh, and then once you share this information with them, laugh in their face. Something that made the news recently, but has not got a whole lot of attention. It's this. You see, a climate scientist by the name of Patrick Brown outed the whole industry as a bunch of liars. Just how did he do that? Well, by telling a lie himself. For a bit of background, just to provide the bona fides of the scientist, Patrick T. Brown is a Ph.D. climate scientist. He is a co-director of the climate and energy team at the Breakthrough Institute and is an adjunct faculty member in the Energy Policy and Climate Program at Johns Hopkins University. Lots of government contracts there. He holds a Ph.D. from Duke University in Earth and Climate Sciences, a master's degree from San Jose State University in Meteorology and Climate Science, and a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in Atmospheric and Oceanic Studies. He has conducted research at the Carnegie Institution at Stanford University, NASA JPL at Caltech, NASA Langley in Virginia, NASA Goddard in D.C., and NOAA's GFDL at Princeton. He has published numerous papers in Nature, PNAS, and Nature Climate Change, as well as many other journals, and has provided commentary for the New York Times, CNN, the BBC, Washington Post, Newsweek, The Guardian, ABC News, San Francisco, and CBS News, San Francisco, among other places. Not a lot of right-leaning uh, publications or news organizations there, right? The left relied on him for his expert status. So, I guess you would agree that this guy is kind of an expert on this whole climate science thing, don't you think? So in an article that was on the American Insider last week, comes this news. Patrick Brown, Dr. Patrick Brown, recently acknowledged having left out the full truth in regard to climate change, pushing the blame on human causes in order for his study to be published in a reputable journal. This highly regarded climate scientist admitted that he had molded his study's results to gain the approval of editors at Nature and Science. Well, well, well. Dr. Brown admitted that he told a lie. He published a lie because he knew that was the only way to get his study published to prove his point about the actual misinformation in the commie climate alarmist camp, which means that the editors at Nature and Science will only publish studies that confirm their man-made climate change alarmism. They would refuse to publish anything that scientifically challenges their narrative. It's a narrative that is necessary to fleece the American taxpayers, to destroy our nation's exceptionalism, and to destroy our sovereignty. That's just peachy, right? Dr. Brown even called them out on it. He stated, and I'm quoting here, the editors of these journals have made it abundantly clear, both by what they publish and what they reject, that they want climate papers that support certain pre-approved narratives, even when those narratives come at the expense of broader knowledge for society, unquote. In other words, these journals only want to spread misinformation, no matter the cost to sovereignty and national wealth. Let's pause for a second before we get into the next segment. I'll be right back, folks. And I'm back. Well, it looks like we won't have enough time to discuss the lie that federalism in our constitutional republic is alive and well. I'll save that discussion for next week when we talk about the topic of liberty. 
The actual proper functioning of federalism in our republic is vital to the people's liberty. The 16th and 17th Amendments laid the foundation of how federalism is not how a republic functions anymore. I'm hoping to get Tennessee State Senator Janice Bowling on the program to discuss her proposed legislation about nullification that was killed by the trans publicans in our General Assembly the last two regular sessions. And then we're going to discuss on the liberty the importance of the 10th Amendment and why it's regularly ignored by the federal government. And with that, folks, that is all the time I have for this week's episode. In closing, we have this week's wisdom from God's Word, and today it comes to us from Proverbs 29, 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. In case you've not been paying attention to the machinations of our local, state, and federal politicians for the past century, but most especially over the past two decades, this wisdom from the Book of Wisdom may be lost on you. But for those of us that are paying attention, please understand that the people who just want to be left alone, they are sitting in a position of surrender to the wicked men and women that are in positions of authority. The more of them that do that, drag the rest of us down with them. It's up to us to encourage them to shake off that apathy that is brought about by the communists' lies. God's words from three millennia ago that I just shared are just as applicable today. There are too few righteous men and women that seek political office today, often because they are not encouraged to do so by their fellow citizens. I want to remind you all again of the closing words to the Declaration of Our Independence. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Now, are you willing to do the same thing? If not for your sake, for your children's and grandchildren's sake, God did not give us armor so we could hunker down and wait for somebody else to come along and rescue us from the wicked. Armor that is not used falls into decay and falls into ruin. We, which means every single one of the citizens of this great republic, must put that armor on and enter in the arena to fight against the wicked, to fight against the oppression of those who would seek to rule us and not to govern us as servant leaders. The armor of God will protect us as we seek to embrace and live out the mantra that resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. Once again, thank you all for listening. I pray you all enjoy the rest of this week and that you take a stand in the arena, that you all get involved in the work necessary to restore our constitutional republic. That includes encouraging those that want to stand in the arena. Until next week, stand in the arena with me, reveling. It's time to wake up.